Three things I want you to remember is, one is this, that uh, life is more beautiful when you share it with someone who truly loves you. You're not hearing me. Life is so beautiful when you share it with someone who truly loves you. And I pray that before the month is over, uh, those who have not found love will find. Okay, since you shut up, don't find. I said, those who have not found love will find. Yeah. And those who already have found, God will make it sweeter. Amen. Say amen like thunder. Amen. That's why the Bible said it's not good that the man should be alone. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. That was God speaking. He said that we make life gooder for man. You're not hearing me. So he brought a woman, somebody you can share love and life with. That's what marriage is all about. That's what relationship is all about. That you are not alone. You can share love and life with somebody. Receive grace. Yeah. This service is full of unbelievers. Yeah. I say receive grace. Yeah. Now the second thing is, is that love relationships are challenging. And it takes intentional effort to make it work. You see anybody that is reading all these romance novels and happily ever after. Uh, the young girls that started life reading it are already confused now. <laughs> because all the things they saw there, they don't see it in real life. Love is quite challenging, is it? Yes. Uh, is it? Yes. Uh, and it takes real intentional effort to make it work. So if you are a romantic, we celebrate you. But you have to put your head down and get it done. I told you of the man that uh, was passing somewhere and saw a be beautiful farm. And saw so the man that owned the farm, he said, wow, look at this amazing farm that God gave to you. The man turned to him and said, you, 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 <laughs> I wish you saw this farm when God owned it by himself. You didn't hear me. <laughs> because uh, what you don't maintain, only weeds grow there. Yes. Are you with me? <laughs> when God owned it by himself, before God gave it to me, it was weeds here. When he gave me, I began to maintain it. All of you that are dreaming of finding the right partner. Marriages are made in heaven but are used on earth. And when you import the car from Japan, don't forget Nigerian rules are terrible. Am, am I talking to somebody here? <laughs> Nigerian rules bad though. <laughs> so even though God gave you a wife, now earth you go use her. Are we still here? God gave you a husband, now earth we do. A man is a fallen person. Lift up your hand. May God give you guidance. Amen. May God take you there. Amen. The third thing I want you to know is that anyone can find love. And anyone can recover love with a little favor and wisdom. If you bring in favor and bring in wisdom, you can recover love. Are you still with me? God will give you the favor to recover. And God will give you the favor to find. Proverbs 13, 15 says, Good understanding give a favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Don't let your way be hard. Settle down and gain the understanding that will give you favor. Education doesn't give wisdom. Are you with me? Wisdom is the right application of understanding. So you can have knowledge without understanding. Come on, are you with me? And you can even understand without knowing how to apply, without applying it right. So all through this meeting, we're going to not just teach you, but minister to you. Are you with me? And this particular Wednesday will be hot here. I won't be teaching much. It will be on the, you will talk your own. You didn't hear me. I'm going to allow women tell me what they want in their husbands. And a lot of men tell me what they want in their wives. And young people tell me what they want in... You know, they look me like that. <laughs> you better be there, oh. You better be there to hear. Because there are some things people won't tell you. But when they talk here, you hear. No, you didn't hear me. <laughs> Somebody will tell somebody, they say that thing. <laughs> Lift your hand and say, I will find favor. So today let me just talk briefly on how to find good and obtain favor. Proverbs 8.35 For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Are you with me? 
there are something you find and you find life and obtain favor and the bible was talking there about wisdom somebody say wisdom you see the bible says uh who would have find it a wife ah huh? that's what finds a good thing and obtains what favor of the lord but look at this uh, whoso findeth me was talking about favor wisdom he said if you find me you find life and of shall obtain favor of the lord so it takes wisdom to find the right spouse oh, you didn't get it he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains what favor and then wisdom tells you whoever finds me finds life and shall obtain what so the key into the favor of finding a wife is a wisdom that opens that door so if you miss on the wisdom of it you can't find you just be hanging around how do you know you find good in marriage because a lot of marriages are not good believe me a lot of marriages are just long suffering and well You know it's a good marriage when there is real friendship and compassion. The person is a friend and the person is compassionate. He can feel for you. There are marriages you go to, the man doesn't feel for the wife. No compassion. The woman doesn't feel for the husband. They can do somebody something, eh? No, you're not hearing me. You know, when somebody who doesn't have feeling for you does you something, it's difficult. Have you seen a parent flogging a child before? Huh? It doesn't matter how bad a woman is flogging the child. There is a restraint because there's love for that child. Huh? That same woman, if he's flogging, maybe another person's child, that restraint is not there. Have you? Have you seen some women deal with a house girl? That is as small as their own child. Yes. Huh? Yes. What their child will do, and they say, Shah! Get out of here. That house girl of the same age does it, and they pick Ken. That's another person's child. When somebody doesn't have compassion for you, any small thing becomes quarrel. Any small problem, you, you, you can be forgiven. Good marriage is built on mutual love and trust, mutual respect. That's how to know you have a good marriage. That you respect your wife. Your wife respects you. And those of you about to get married, please understand that. Are you with me? When there is a good marriage, if you find good in marriage, there is emotional intimacy. There is sexual intimacy. Both of you are connected in the heart. And your sexual life is not a meeting. It's love making. There are no children in this church. Only 20 and above is permitted in this hall. That's why we have mighty teen. That's why I have early teen. Mighty teen is from 16 to 19. They're over there. Early teen is 12, 13 to 15. They're over there. All of you here are adults. Look at me. Am I talking to somebody here too? I can talk to you. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Any home where you go to and the way they make love is Madame Ton. That home not trouble. There's no sexual intimacy. There's no emotional intimacy. They can't sit down and talk and just laugh. Their hearts are not connected. Every time it's one quarrel, laughter, not, no way settling case. That's a bad marriage. Are you with me? How do you know that your home is a good home? It brings out the best in you and helps you to fulfill purpose. That's how to know it's a good home. That since you got into this home, you are bad character. Do you know there are people that were not nagging until they got married? Now, when they got into the marriage, now they have become nagging, nagging superstars. You, you're not hearing. Why? Because the person they got married to brought out the worst from them, not the best in them. Are you here? There are people you get married to, your career begins to shine. Your destiny begins to rise. There are others you connect to, they cut your wings. Even if you are shining, come and talk to me. Everything gets messed up. You marry a jealous husband, you even you go to shop, it's a problem. Is that why you dress like that? They're going to see you like that. 
before wouldn't they see her? They're, they're going to see you like that. A shower. Are you, are you hearing my voice? What kind of nonsense is I marry? Praise the Lord. Well, 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 I believe God you are going to find good. I believe that anyone here, yes, single, God will guide you right. Shout amen like thunder. In the four services today, I'm just going to tell you how to find good and obtain favor. In the first service, I'm dealing with have a positive perspective of marriage. In the second service, be a life giver in every relationship. In the third service, be sincere about following God's guidance. And the last service, lay a solid financial foundation for financial success. If you do these four things, you are going to find good and obtain favor. It's not difficult. I'm not going to be shouting all through this month because I want to be binding something. So let's deal with have a positive perspective of marriage. You see, the mentality with which you enter anything determines what you get out of it. And anything you see with a bad perspective will look bad. I've, I've said to you before, how many of you here ever use sunshades? Anybody here? You use you sunshades? Huh? When you walk out into the sun and the whole place is very bright and it's affecting your eye and you take a sunshade and put, suddenly everywhere looks cool. Talk to me. It's not that the sun is still not bright. It's just the way your perspective has changed. Brothers and sisters, there are a lot of people who are entering into marriage with a very terrible perspective of marriage. People that see marriage as a good thing prepare to enjoy its goodness. But people that see marriage as a necessary evil position to survive it. There are people that see marriage as a good thing. So they prepare to enjoy it. From day one, they're telling themselves, my marriage must work. I will do whatever it will take to make this one work. I must enjoy this. But those who see it as a necessary evil, from day one, they're positioning to survive it. I told you of the young lady. True story, I'm not lying. I didn't add to her story. She said when she was getting married, she was marrying a man from my area. So the mother told her, is he most people then they beat their wife up? Yes. Are you from Imo State? On a debate on a wife. <laughs> no, you're not hearing me. Are you hearing me? <laughs> uh, well, that's what her mother told her. I told her, I'm telling you the story she told me. Hello? That's what her mother is. Imo State, they beat their wife up. He said, before you go there, prepare. She said, when she was preparing to get married, brothers and sisters, as she was packing after the wedding to her husband's house, she had some very tight, short jeans in case the man met her. <laughs> no, you're not hearing. And listen, she took him, she put to bed, and brothers and sisters, three weeks after she put to bed, she was quarreling with her husband, and the man slapped her. Ah! She said, I put my hand on my head. I said, my mother told me that they must tell people that they beat their wife. Please, those of you watching that live in most state, no kill me. <laughs> Come, I'm telling a story. Hello? I said, I'm telling a story. Let me, I am telling a disclaimer. I am telling a story. <laughs> are, are you people here? Because somebody's going to shoot arrow on the on the internet right now. He said, there's one man preaching against him on state people and call him on state governor. I'm telling a story, oh. <laughs> Come on. Are you here? <laughs> so the woman said, I put my hand on her ice cream. I said, my mother told me, he must tell people that they beat their wife. Hey! She ran into the room and brought out her jeans. Wore it. Tied a belt around herself. And came out. He said, we're fighting today. The mother told her, any day your husband beat you, fight him to a standstill. He won't beat you again. So she was ready to practice what she prepared for. I know the man and the wife. I believe the son may be watching me now. If he's not in church. <laughs> 
Are you hearing? <laughs> no, the man, the woman grabbed this man. This thing happened around 9 p.m. Believe me, by 4 a.m., the man knelt down as I tire. <laughs> we have been fighting since 9. We have not slept. Let me go to bed. He said, you will kill me here today. He told me, he said, Pastor, that was the cure for beating in my marriage. No, you are not hearing. From that day till this evening morning, the man has not tried it again. Every time the man says, ah, she said, you want again? <laughs> are you guys? No, no, that, 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 that's a terrible thing. But you see, she wasn't preparing to enjoy her home. She was preparing to survive it. That's not what to do. Prepare yourself with the mentality that your home is a good thing. Genesis 2.18 It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. That's what God came to do. Exodus chapter 4 verse 9 The Bible says there are two are better than one because I have a good reward for their labor. This is God's view of marriage and it should be your view. Why do people have a bad view of marriage? Some of them came from a loveless home. And if you came from a loveless home, you don't know better. So you think what you saw is how everybody is. No, you're not hearing me. If you hear my voice, say yes. Other people are victims of a failed romance. They came into life as young people with excitement and they, they threw their heart at somebody. And the person took their heart and persisted. I've warned you before. Give your heart to Jesus. <laughs> You're not hearing me. <laughs> when you give your heart to a man, <laughs> you have heartbreak. Give your heart to Jesus and give your love to men. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your love to men. Don't give your heart to anybody. You're not hearing me. Men will pieces your heart if they collect it. Nobody can manage heart. Only God can manage it. Am I talking to somebody here today? Just love people. But let him have your heart. Not have heartbreak for nothing. Another reason why some people prepare negatively about marriage. They have a bad perspective. Is that consumers of negative news. You know there are people. The only news that enters their brain are the bad ones. No matter what good thing they see, they position and fix it on the negative. The only friends they notice are those whose marriage is failed. Not the ones whose marriages are working well. They say, see, Chiamana, she don't come home. They say, uh, Angelina, he don't come home. They say, Timmy, he don't come home. They say, married, no, they walk home. But that are not all your only friends. You see other people around you who are chopping life in their home. You can't celebrate with them. You're a witch. Lift your right hand. I speak over you today. Your own will walk. Yeah. First service, we're going to call right now. I say, Your own will walk. Yeah. I say, Your own will walk. Yeah. You know the bad thing about negative views about marriage? It puts a mental stronghold on you. You, it, you, you, you unconsciously begin to sabotage your relationship. You unconsciously begin to Hello Can I tell you something Any man that believes that women Are not trustworthy We never trust a woman Ah huh? So whenever he enters into a relationship Suspicion, suspicion, suspicion Suspicion Any woman that believes that men are not trustworthy We never trust a man So When you are dating the person when you engage with the person, he will be searching you up and down. Please talk to me. Everything you say, they will suspect until anger. Please, what I'm saying, does it happen? You, you just know, if you say, I'm coming from there, they go and stand by the road to check. Is it coming from here or coming from there? If one way or another that's standing here and they see you coming from that side, they will go up and say, you said you are coming from here. He said, but I was driving and there was a roadblock. We took the other way. He said, let us go and find out. <laughs> Why? Because that's how she grew up. 
People, am I making sense to you? Yes, this is what messes up marriage. But when you have a healthy perspective, is that all, all of these believers, we can't trust them again. Begin to trust them because you are one of us. If we can't trust believers, that means we can't trust you. Is all of these young men in church? We don't know. Nobody's born again, again. Are you not a young person? Are you born again? He said, we can't, they, 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 we, no, no, all of these people, I marry church person. He doesn't, no, marry in church, it matters. There are good people in church. There are good businessmen in church. There are good husbands in church. There are good wives in church. And one good thing about church members is this, that even when we are wrong, we don't go as wrong as those outside. There is still a check in our heart. There is still the fear, please, what I'm saying, is that true? There is still the fear of God. Believe that it will work. Come and lift your hand and say, We walk. Shout it like thunder, it will work. Can I allow that it will work? When people have a bad view of marriage, they have fear of commitment. They can't commit to anything. That's why a young man can date a girl for one whole year and he's still not sure. He's still not sure. And there's some foolish girls that will allow a young man date them for four years. Are they going to give you BSC? Am I talking to somebody here today? The man, for four whole years, you're hanging around him, waiting to graduate. They wonder they look me. If you hear my voice, say yes. yes. They will give you a certificate and send you away. Is that not what they do in university? After you hung around for four years, did they give you a certificate and keep you? So when you're cutting for four years, they will give you a certificate and send you away. He said, you try, you cut it. We have found you pro proven in character and service. Now take. And that's when you find out that there's no employment outside. Did you, didn't you graduate from Nigerian University? Have you found job? Lift your right hand. I speak over you. In the name of the one who called me, you won't waste your destiny. Yeah. So how do you keep a godly perspective? The first thing is, see marriage in its covenant beauty. See marriage in its covenant beauty. Ephesians chapter 5. God was speaking about marriage. And he said, he was talking about husbands, love your wife from verse 22 as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it and began to talk about if you see marriage in this covenant beauty the marriage is simply a picture of Christ and the church brothers and sisters you know you sit down here today and you really believe that Jesus loves you how many here believe Jesus loves them you do with all your mess with all your failures with all your problems you see how comfortable you are sitting in church. Knowing that no angel is coming with Koboko. And you know your history of this week. I'm not talking about last week. Oh. Just this week. All the lies you told. The way people are looking at me. I am your pastor. If you doubt me now, I will show you I'm a prophet. I will stand up two men here now and prophesy. Is anybody hearing me? <laughs> if God used to do something in church every Sunday, when people come, randomly, he would just pick one person and flash all that happened in the life of that person within the week or not. Church will close in one day. The moment it happens the first time, <laughs> next Sunday, I know they go. <laughs> I know they. The reason is that you are not perfect. You have your struggles. You have, am I talking to somebody here? You have issues in your life. But Jesus loves you. He keeps blessing you. He keeps harboring you. He keeps showing you mercy. He keeps forgiving you. That's marriage. Are you hearing me here? When you see marriage in his covenant beauty, that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It gives you an understanding of what your home should be like. Are you with me? The second thing that gives you a good perspective of marriage is draw inspiration from love couples. Stop looking at deadbeat couples. Stop 
Stop looking at people whose home is not inspiring. Stop looking at people whose home is shameful. And begin to draw inspiration from people whose home should be on a billboard. Are you with me? There are people it is working for and they will work for you. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. Look at many people that God has blessed in this church and their homes are shining. Pick from them. Not the one that the husband is slapping. Draw inspiration. And ask yourself, how are they making it? And some homes you saw that went into crisis and survived. How did they survive? That's how to draw inspiration. People that raise quality covenant children, how did they do it? That's how to draw inspiration. So as a young person, you see two persons and they're working together. Their lives are blending together. I mean, I mean, I mean, they, they, their home is getting sweeter as the days go by. You say, I want to be like that. Are you with me? I was talking to somebody about to get wedded. Uh, to a pastor and I was asking the wife the person she wants to he wants to marry said uh, is there any pastor's wife you are connected to and she said no anyone you are serving she said no I said you better begin because that's a dangerous sign I said because you don't understand pastor's marriages that pastor's marriages are totally different from any other marriage you know you need to understand that that the demands of pastoring is 24 hours. You are not hearing me. The many things we preach for you on the pulpit, to do it at home is a challenge. Not because we don't want to, but because many of you don't, don't notice that when there's a holiday, that's when church is having program. No, you didn't hear me. What I'm saying, is that true? Instead of taking your wife out, members will take their wife out. Your own wife is in church, clapping hand. Your children are, come and talk to me. How many of you are happy if I travel now for three weeks, go on a cruise somewhere? Can, can we have a vote now so I can travel? I've been looking for you to vote me out. Come, are you hearing me? One week, that shouting. Before when I travel with my family, what I do is we live on Sunday evening, fly out of the country, go over there. Friday, I told the wife, continue, I come back. But other people will comfortably stay for two weeks, three weeks, go on different places with their family. Why? Because the demands of church is a lot challenging. Now, I'm not saying that's the best thing, but we are building a ministry at that time and trying to get things up. Now you are grown up, I will travel though. Uh, is anybody hearing me? You are grown up now. You are grown up now. You are not going anywhere. Uh, then I was trying to convince you that I'm your father. Now you know your papa. Give the Lord a beautiful clap offering. <laughs> we move. Okay. So, so you see, you, you draw inspiration. I was saying the person, I said, what helped my marriage is because before my wife got married to me, when she found out that God was telling her she was going to marry a pastor, I haven't met her at that time. She went to... Uh, serve on the pastor's wife and spent about two years in that uh, pastor's wife's uh, guidance every morning that she's free she'll go to the house clean things for them will do some things for them walk with them and all of that and she saw they were not rich they were not rich they were living close to her house I know them they're not rich and then she would take care of the children. She saw them manage money, saw the struggles of ministry, saw the man come back and all of that. And it became her pattern. So when she came into my house, it was easy for her to understand the struggles of the beginning of her church. So when I tell you she didn't put pressure on me, it wasn't because I was good or because God taught her. It was because she saw it in another woman. So I, am I talking to somebody here? When you see where it's working, you can make it work for yourself. The third thing that will help you to have a good perspective of marriage is be realistic about human frailties. Be realistic about human frailties. There is nobody are going to marry that is a saint in the sense of not everything is perfect. We are saints in Christ, but not in the sense of everything is perfect. If you hear my voice, say yes. Are you with me? Oh, I, no, if, if I, this man that's teaching us marriage, if I can only marry him, why are you, you are thinking of marrying him? His wife is quarreling him. 
because in their home they settled quarrel before they came to teach you and it's what he learned at home he's teaching you I think I'm wasting my time with this is anybody hearing me here nobody is perfect stop looking for the perfect husband or the perfect wife and decide to make it work where you are and young person stop looking for the perfect bride there's no perfect bride decide to be the perfect husband if you have my voice say yes young girl there's no perfect man decide and when you get married listen if you decide in your heart to give people love without condition and to give them forgiveness on credit your home will work you give people love without condition you forgive them even before they offend your life becomes easy and you go home to be a human being you go home to be a nice person to live with and you just keep giving mercy and compassion because people will fail people are going to disappoint people are going to have issues that why that human man na man I'm in the wrong service. So. Is anybody catching what I'm talking to? So no matter the standards we set, understand that me, me. And finally, trust the good and grace in your own life. Tell yourself I'm good enough and good things will happen to me. That's how to find. Have a good perspective. I am good and good things are meant to happen to me. And trust the Lord to bring good things into your life. What I'm teaching now. Some of you that are married, go teach it to your sisters and brothers. And those who are married, also apply it in your own lives. And those who are yet to be married, good will come to you. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. The Bible says, houses and lands are inheritance of fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. So only God can give that. Only God can give you a prudent husband. Only God can give you a good future if you ask him. We're going to get to that in the service in the evening when i'll be talking to the young people on how not to settle for less you can't settle for less than god is giving you everybody stand to your feet i tire for you did you catch something did you catch something lift up your two hands your home will walk